Good morning students. The topic that we are going to do today is cation analysis. The salt analysis that you do in the lab has got two parts to it, anion and cation. The cations are divided further into six groups on the basis of the precipitation of the ion. Right now, we will be only taking up three groups, 0, 1 and 2. The zero group has got only one anion ammonium, group one has got one anion lead, group two has got two anions copper and arsenic. Out of these four, only this has a colored salt. Rest all of the salts, the three of them would be white salts. We always begin with steps. The first step to salt analysis is you take the salt, mind you it's the salt, not the solution. To the salt, a pinch of it, add NaOH and you can smell ammonia gas. Now this part is slightly tricky. It's difficult to smell ammonia gas. The reason being, in your test tube, you take the salt and then you add NaOH to it. The ammonia has to go up and then can you smell it? Since ammonia molecules are bound by intermolecular hydrogen bonding, they are not that volatile. Their vaporization is not that good. So you find a problem at times to smell it. So my advice would be, you can do the same test on the palm of your hand. It won't corrode or anything. You, it is not harmful. You can easily take a pinch of salt in your palm, add a drop or two of NaOH and rub it and you can smell it there easily. Once you get the smell, you're sure that it might have ammonium and then you perform the same test in a test tube. Now let us assume you took the salt in a test tube, added NaOH and the gas came out. Bring a glass rod dipped in, concentrated HCl near the mouth, not into the mouth, just near the mouth and you would find dense white fumes of ammonium chloride escaping from it. That is one way of testing it. The other way of testing it is you add to this test tube Nestler's reagent. This reagent is K2HGI4. If you add the Nestler's reagent, you get brown colored here itself. That is a brown coloration in the test tube on the sides of the wall, that is the walls of the test tube, you get a brown PPT formation confirms ammonium ion. At times, after some time if the gas escapes, the brown PPT is also not visible. Hence, as soon as you get the brown PPT, get it confirmed with your teacher. That is how we go about group 0. The second step is for group 1. In that case, you require the OS. OS stands for original solution or in books it is also written as WE. The WE stands for the water extract. To this you add dilute HCl, 1 ml. How much is 1 ml? Around 1 cm in length in your test tube is roughly 1 ml. On adding this, if you get a white PPT, this white PPT would be for PBCl2. If you get a white PPT, that indicates the presence of lead chloride. You can heat the solution. PBCl2 dissolves. You can cool it. How do you cool it? By bringing the test tube under the water, tap water. You will again get the precipitate. So, once you get the precipitate, you heat it, you get PBCl2 aqueous in solution form. Divide it into two halves. To one half add Ki solution. You get yellow PPT of PBI2 to the other part add K2CRO4 potassium chromate mind you it's not potassium dichromate potassium dichromate has two CRs in it this is potassium chromate with one CR you again get a yellow PPT this yellow PPT is of PBCRO4 and that confirms your group 1 moving on to group 2 the third step, in case 
of after adding dilute HCl to the OS, you get no white PPT means group 1 absent. Now what do you do? Pass H2S gas through the test tube. On passing H2S gas through the test tube, you have two options. One is you may get a black PPT which would be due to copper or you may get a yellow PPT which would be due to arsenic. The valency of arsenic is 3, sulphide is 2. So the PPT's formula would be AS2S3. In both the PPT's you add 50% nitric acid. What does that mean? You take around 1 ml of concentrated nitric acid. To this add 1 ml of water. That makes it 50% and heat. The PPT will dissolve. Once the PPT dissolves, you can then divide it into two parts. To one part after cooling. Mind you, it's after cooling. Add ammonium hydroxide excess. Ammonium hydroxide is a weak base. You are already adding nitric acid. So to neutralize that nitric acid, the ammonium hydroxide required will be much more. So have patience. Add excess of ammonium hydroxide after cooling. Ammonium hydroxide is nothing but ammonia plus water. So if you don't cool it and add it to a hot medium, ammonia would escape. It would be as good as adding water. So whenever you are adding ammonium hydroxide, remember it has to be added to a solution which is at room temperature. You get a blue coloration which confirms copper ions. The second part, add concentrated nitric acid. If you have a, I'm sorry, here. To the second part, after you've dissolved it in concentrated nitric acid, this is the same. Now add potassium ferrocyanide, K4, FeCN6. This will give you a chocolate brown PPT. So both the tests are for copper. One is a blue coloration, the other is a chocolate brown coloration. Whereas in case of arsenic, once you get the yellow PPT, you add concentrated nitric acid and heat. The PPT dissolves. Now you add ammonium molybdate solution. Ammonium molybdate solution to it and leave it. On keeping you would get a canary yellow PPT. The canary yellow is like a lemon rind color. This canary yellow PPT would confirm arsenic. I hope you recalled this test is exactly like phosphate. So phosphate as an anion and arsenic as a cation have a similar test. That's it for today. We've dealt with three groups, group 0, group 1 and group 2 of cations.